So in this talk, I'm going to consider one subtlety associated with partial derivatives, which is that the value of the partial derivative depends on all the inputs. Okay, And what that means is that if I differentiate a function with respect to one of the inputs, the value of that of that partial derivative will depend not just on that input, but it could depend on the other inputs to the function. Let's take an example and then I'll explain the general idea in more detail. Let's look at this function. It's a function of two variables, x and y, given by this expression. What is f sub x of x comma y? What does that mean? We are differentiating with respect to x holding y constant. Holding y constant. So what does that become? Well, x squared differentiates to? 2x. What does y squared differentiate to? 0. 0, because you differentiate with respect to x holding y constant. This is a constant. Plus, this becomes y squared. Okay. What is, let's just put it here, are we here? Mm -hmm. What is f sub y of x comma y? Hmm? It's 2y plus x squared. Mm -hmm. What? Plus x. 2y plus x. 2x. Sorry, say that again. So it's 2y plus. <laughs> 2y plus 2xy. 2xy, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now, 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 before we go on, we can already see what I was saying in a brief way, which is that the expression for f sub x depends on both x and y. The expression for x, f sub y, the expression for the partial derivative of f with respect to y, also depends on both x and y. Okay? So, in some sense, we've already illustrated this, but, but I want to illustrate it with some numerical values, just to be concrete. So, what is f sub x? On one side, f sub y on the other. So I'll just do f sub x here, f sub y here. What is f sub x of two comma three? What is f sub x of two comma three? So it's two times two plus three squared. Three squared. What does that simplify to? Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. What is f sub x of 2 comma 4? Now notice the inputs, the x value remained the same, but the y value changed. What is that? 20. 20. Okay. So what do we notice? We notice that the value of f sub x changes when you change the y value, even though the x value remained the same. So it was 13 initially, and now it's 20. So what's the model? It's, it's saying that that the value of f sub x depends not just on the x input, but also possibly on the y input. Okay, let's take an example for this. So what is f sub y of 1 comma 4? So x is 1, y is 4. What is this? 2 by 4 plus 2 by 4. 2 times 1 times 4. Mm -hmm. Is this captured? Yeah. So that's what? 16. What is f sub y of uh, 2 comma 4? 2 by 4 plus 2 by 2 by 4. What does that simplify to? 24. 24. Okay, so we notice again the y value remains the same, which when you change the x value, the output changed. And so f sub y also depends on both x and y. So, in general, the value of the partial derivative depends on all the inputs. Now, we could do something with functions of more than two variables. And in that case, so instead of just x and y, you could have x, y, and z, or you could have x1, x2, to xn. And the general observation there would be that the partial derivative with respect to any one variable could, in principle, depend on, on the other variables as well. So, in subsequent videos, we look at some exceptions at how to quantify the extent to which this cross-dependence occurs and at some real-world examples and applications.